The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. As a small biz pro, I so we roll. Using procurement, program, and control. As a small biz pro, I so we grow. Using procurement, program, and control. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. Crystal Mitchell, do you Good have a Good afternoon, yes, everyone. Yes, this is the Business Zone with... Crystal and Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. And today, folks, we're going to have a very special business zone uh, episode. Uh, today, we've got a very, very special guest in our studio. And that special guest is no other than my co host, Crystal Yvonne Yvette Yolanda <laughs> Mitchell. You're me a bunch of other names. <laughs> Uh, yes, I am the guest today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the the, the wonderful accolades. That's cool. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have fun today. You know, as you just said, you want to interview on on Women's History Month. That's right. People that you know. Huh? That's right. Okay. So we're gonna be interviewing. We're not even gonna do that uh, little cross talk that we usually do every Friday, uh, just before, just as the beginning of the show. What we're going to do, we're going to jump right into knowing my co-host. Ah. She's a phenomenal woman. She's a super woman. She's done a lot of great things in the community. Many of you know her, but you really don't know her. <laughs> so what we're going to do today, we're going to interview this phenomenal woman <laughs> so she can tell us all about who Crystal Mitchell is. All right. So without further ado, I want to say... Welcome to the Business Zone, and Crystal, yes. you're on. And I'm on, huh? So what you want to know about me? Well, what I want to know, if you will, if you don't mind telling the audience, who is Crystal Mitchell? Well, she has many, I have many factors. There's many parts to me. So I have my business part. I have my community outreach and philanthropy part. And, and, and then I have my fun part which is me in the party spirit, and I have my sports part. Mm -hmm. So I have very, that's why I always say, and you know, a couple of weeks ago, I told you somebody tried to clone my uh, Instagram account. Yes. I can't be cloned. It can't be cloned. I have too many components. I have too many parts. <laughs> too many moving parts. <laughs> too many moving parts. So, so, so Crystal and I, we've known each other for multiple years now. I can't even count the number of years. Yeah, it's been uh, we, a number of years now. Yes, we, we met at an event, and I want to welcome uh, our listeners and, and viewers here on the business zone, Harold, Harold uh, Blair, uh, Thaddeus, Reina, and Meluno. I want to <laughs> introduce you all to the business zone. You guys are going to learn some stuff about a phenomenal woman here on our show. She is the executive director of Recycling Black Dollars. And for those of you who don't know what Recycling Black Dollars is, I'm going to have Crystal tell you herself, and she's going to give you a little history about it and how she got involved and how she's helping minority and small businesses to succeed. All so, right. Crystal, tell us a little about your involvement. Uh, all right, I'll do that. Before I do that, I have a couple of people. Hey, Kelvin, hey, Kelvin, hey, Roy, or, uh, Roger, thank you. Roger told me I'm amazing. <laughs> and, and, Kel and Kelvin says, hey, she has a garden, too. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and I play tennis. That's true. <laughs> well, the, the, and this is interesting. When I, um, and I don't know if it was intentional or if it just kind of happened. I, I want to say it was intentional that I felt when I went into business for myself that there had to be, hey, hi, cuz, um, <laughs> hi, Uncle Monroe, uh, that I felt that there had to be a give, a give back part of mm -hmm. me. And this is before our being part of Recycling Black Dollars. So when I was, um, before I even went in, uh, into college, I was a Girl Scout leader mm -hmm. at, uh, for the church that I belong to. And yes. I felt that I had to do a give back piece. That mm -hmm. was really important to me. Yes. And so I did that for a number of years. And then um, 
And then once I started my business, then I got involved with skiing and teaching kids how to ski. And, and it really came out of the Girl Scouts because one of the things I and, and and there's a common thread here. I love my people. Yes. Everybody know that about me. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I also think that. It's our responsibility as adults to give back to children. Yes, so yes. usually the area that I participate in is kids. Yes. And so it was Girl Scout leader. And then I went to, te uh, I learned how to ski. And I'm one that I want to share my love and yeah, my, my yeah. wealth and my knowledge and resources yeah. to people that I care about. Yeah. And so I was like, if I'm going to go skiing, I can't give up the Girl Scouts. So that no. means I got to take the girls with me. Gotta take them and with so you. that's kind of how I got involved in, in starting a program with uh, with with skiing. Right. And then and then that just evolved into a number of things. I did meet Muhammad earlier on in my mm -hmm. career and uh, networking. For those of those folks uh, listening and watching right now. Uh, who don't know Muhammad? Can you tell them a little bit about who Muhammad is and what he meant for the community and yourself? Yes. Yeah, so Muhammad Nazardine had this vision, and he had this vision that we as black people should take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the bottom line of yes. it. And he said economically, that was where we had to put our attention. Mm -hmm. And just like all the rest of us, when he went to go look for black business in order to support that black business, he couldn't find it. Yes. So he started the, the Recycling Black Dollars. And one of the things he found is that we don't advertise our businesses, which we all know this. That's true. And so he, he started having the Recycling Black Dollar breakfast mixer. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, he had a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And then he would bring in people. He traveled everywhere. And he actually uh, was this mission. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a point then in April, he deemed Black Business Month. And what he did was in that month, he went to the banks, to Broadway Federal and said, mm -hmm. we're moving. I'm moving four million dollars to your bank. Wow. And that's what he did. He wow. moved four million dollars of, of the black business owners and, and to their bank. And so today there's still many people over there. Yeah. He uh, also. Um, uh, um, What's the name? Um, the the bank. Um, I think it was called Founders. Founders. Yeah, so it was between the two of them, he yes. did that. He also took uh, uh, back when it was deemed that uh, China was going to be the next country that would be equal and comparable to the United States from an economic standpoint. Uh -huh. So he went over there to to establish some relationships. Right. And so he had he took a contingency of black people that could do business there. That's great. He went to Africa. So his whole thing was about us doing what we do and he died with his doing what he was doing in his office. So so tell me Crystal, how did you get involved in recycling black dollars? Well, one of the things is that everything I do is a relationship. Uh-huh. And so I in my ski world I met a guy named uh, Willie. He mm -hmm. he was a historian for for recycling black dollar for, mm -hmm. for the ski club. Yeah. So he brought me in. In order when he, when Muhammad died, Willie became the interim mm -hmm. director. Willie Fan is his name. And so Willie wanted me to come in because he was one of my resources for my bookkeeping business. Right. He would send his clients over mm -hmm. to me and refer them over. Right. So then out the the the. Uh, Recycling Black Dollars was one of those clients. Yes. And then years later, after Willie passed, with about a, two years, I think, after Willie passed, then Willie, uh, it just, we were trying to find a director. And then someone said, why are you doing that? You're already there. So me and Jackie, Jackie B., uh, we decided to co-direct. And it was nobody. And I, and I have business skills that is necessary for the black business population. So, so they said, why not community. you? And why not me? And so, and at first. Now, here's the thing. You know, last week we talked about opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's not on my vision board <laughs> to be the director of Recycling Black Dollars. I want to do some other things. I, I got other things I have. <laughs> and so I was, at first I said no. Yeah. And then I thought, why am I saying no? Yeah. That from a networking standpoint, that puts me in a whole different bird's eye seat. Exactly. So then I turned around and said, yes. <laughs> and then, then, then today I'm, you know, co-directing at Recycling. And you've Black been the the, the co-director of Recycling Black Dollars for how long now? I think we're at year thirteen. Wow, thirteen years. Crystal Mitchell has been the the co-director for Recycling Black Dollars, and their focus is to really help a lot of small businesses, provide them with resources, giving them access to opportunities, and also build their businesses. And a lot of small businesses have benefited from this. 
you know, they you've got your weekly breakfast that you have at uh, the well, Denny's. Well, our, our, our monthly. Monthly, we, I'm we sorry. We meet every second Tuesday of every month. Uh-huh. And uh, there you come, you network, you do your 30-second pitch. We bring a guest in uh-huh. that shares something that's going on in our community. Uh-huh. And, and so you have an opportunity to create, to make these relationships with everybody else right, there, right? right? And uh and then we have a resource guide where we publish your information, you buy an ad right. and, and then that way. And so now, you know, it's it's a paperback, it's a it's a hard it's a hard book. It's a book, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not it's more than that, people. So Jackie and I are amazing networkers. Mm-hmm. Jackie's old school. And, and all the traditions. And, and Jackie B is the other uh, yeah, she's executive the, she's director. She's the other executive director. So Jackie, um, she uh, carries on the traditions of RBD. And then I'm the one that's the business person, business yeah. development person. Right. So that's what I do. And so when you meet us uh-huh. and that book... Mm-hmm. You're meeting everybody in the net in, in our in network, network or anyone that we come across. Right. And if you need something, right. a black business, mm-hmm. and you call us or go to the book, but yeah. you call us, we can give you somebody. We can give you at least ten people. And those you those for. are all small businesses that's in the directory, the recycling black dollars re- 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 directory. There's also sponsors. Different sponsors, yes. not, not only just black sponsors, but the other sponsors who are a part of the program as well. Exactly. So we are sponsored by a new number of organizations and corporations in the community. Yes. We provide training classes and workshops for that, that was going to be my next we point. Could, yeah. So tell them about some of the training that you put on for recycling black dollars to help small businesses elevate themselves to the next level. So, uh, so there's a couple of things that I learned just in my own coaching business. Yes. Right? So I, I have outside of recycling black dollars, I have my own coaching business. So one of the things I realized that, uh, a lot of time, there is a lot of missing pieces mm-hmm. in 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 the development of our business owners. Yes, and so being that that's what I do and teach small businesses. So and I and I really find found these things out when I was doing their books. Yes, because you can really find out anyone's weakness from going into their setting where they where their financials mm-hmm. are, how their money comes in, how their money goes out, mm-hmm. and then I see a whole lot of stuff yes. and, and I can literally tell right. how they do business. Yes. And I can even tell you why your business is not growing. Oh yes. So see, <laughs> this lady is a phenomenal lady, man. She's got a magic touch. She's helped me in a lot of ways. She's uh prepared my 1099s for me and a lot of other things. So when we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break right now, but when we come back I want to talk to you, or, or I'm going to have her talk to you <laughs> about um, the phenomenal person that she is as a, a bookkeeper, an accountant, uh, preparing uh, uh, your books for you using QuickBooks, and also other ways in which she can benefit you as well. So, as you all know, this is Women's Biz- B- Women's History Month. Women's History Month, and we're <laughs> celebrating women throughout the whole month of March on this show. And Crystal, our co-host here, she is a phenomenal woman. You don't see her cape today. See that cape? She doesn't have the superwoman cape. <laughs> I have my superwoman cape. Yeah. <laughs> but, but she is superwoman, and we're going to talk about some amazing stuff. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break right now, but we'll be right back, and you're going to see how phenomenal Crystal Mitchell is. All right, so, guys. So you're watching The Business Zone with... Crystal. And Gilbert Buchanan, your small business bar medic. Take a break. In the United States, March is Women's History Month. It honors women's contributions in all areas of life, as scientists, inventors, artists, politicians, and more. The celebration began in 1978, when the School District of Sonoma, California, hosted a week-long recognition of women's accomplishments throughout history. The idea spread, and in 1980, President Jimmy Carter proclaimed the week of March 8th National Women's History Week. Six years later, an organization called the National Women's History Project convinced Congress to dedicate the entire month of March to women's history. Each year, a special focus for the month is declared by the National Women's History Project. For example, important artists like photographer Dorothea Lange and painter Mary Cassatt have been celebrated. Pioneers such as educator Mary McLeod Bethune, Clara Barton, who founded the Red Cross, Amelia Earhart in aviation, and First Lady Michelle Obama have also been honored. 
Women's History Month celebrates unsung heroes, too. So we are back on the business zone. And I just want to thank all our viewers here uh, Harold, Thaddeus, Reina, Meluno, all of you guys for watching. And uh, if you've got any comments or anything you want to add to the show or ask any questions to my fabulous co host, Crystal, here, who is our special guest today, ah. just give us a call at 323 293. 3375. That's 323 293 3375. Give us a call here in the studio. And if any of you out there know her, I want you to call me up and give me a testimonial about her. Okay? <laughs> so, this is Women History Month, and we're celebrating women on the show. We're talking about phenomenal women in our community that not too many people give the credit and praise that they deserve. So, right. I've been working all day, all week, all month, all year. And no one really gives them the prop they deserve. So we're giving recognition and the prop to our own Crystal Mitchell. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Crystal, I yes. wanted to talk to you a little bit about, uh, we know you're in the accounting and bookkeeping space. Yes. So we want to talk a little bit about, one, how you get started in accounting and bookkeeping. And two, tell us about your the program that, you did at Mount SAC, and then we also want to talk about some other things. So go ahead and tell us about the history, Crystal. So uh, actually, um, so like I was saying before we went to commercial break, that uh, a business is hard if you don't have a full um, grasp on your financials, mm -hmm. then it's very hard to grow your business. That's right. right. And, it, and it also is very difficult to get loans and capital mm -hmm. and do contracts and things like that in order to scale your business mm -hmm. up. And so as I started doing bookkeeping, I, I recognized that it's being a problem and, and that most of us, you know, I like numbers, yes. but most business owners don't like They numbers. don't like they numbers. They hate numbers. <laughs> so to me, the numbers is all based upon the making the money. In that's the right. So that's one of the things. So I'm not just a regular bookkeeper. Um, I don't just come in and do your books and leave and never tell you how and why and show you how to read your financial statements. I help you identify where your growth patterns are and where the weak spots are. And then I tie that in with the marketing and and because without the marketing piece, there are no books for me to the 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 two. So to complete. What I'm hearing here from Crystal, my very special guest and co-host, is that if you hate numbers in your business, Crystal can help you. Okay. And how can you hate numbers? That's where the money is. That's where the money <laughs> is. You got to know your numbers. And if you don't know the numbers, you get coached on learning how to know the numbers. And that's what Crystal does for you. That's what I do for you. So I do that um, uh, for mostly small businesses, nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, I have a specialty with churches. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of churches and helping them set up. And then I, I'm also, as my business has grown over the years, I've become more of a troubleshooter. And mm -hmm. that's really how I got into yeah. uh, some of the churches is yeah. because some of my clients like, oh, my God. Because that's the that that place right the churches yeah <laughs> oh lord have there's mercy. a lot of mess in those yeah, financials the, as far as the financials <laughs> the, all kinds of stuff happens going on so I became a troubleshooter so they would call me in it's like okay what's going on here why yeah and then I was just c coming in for. 10, 15 minutes to yeah. fix it. And yeah. then it turned out to be six, seven years as a contractor. Yeah. So, so in <laughs> essence, Crystal does forensics on your financials. Okay. <laughs> she does forensics. So if there is some problems that you don't even know about sometimes, and that's how it usually is in a business, there's financial issues that you don't see. It's under the surface. And with her trained eyes, she can really look under the, 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 the surface and see what's going on. Then she does uh, forensics on it. She looks into the DNA of yeah, your financials. Right, exactly. And she can tell you in minutes what's going on. I, I can tell you in minutes what, what has and who has yes. created the problem <laughs> in your business. And so that kind of, and so then I just kind of shifted my business more to the forensics of, of the business, yes. which I enjoy. Yes. Um, and, and then I just became the community. A fixer, 
Yeah. And so I, I would get, um, I actually would get referrals from my own bank. Oh, wow. They would come up and say, I'm in line. I love it. that. And they'll come up and go, uh, I have a client for you. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> and that like, is, that's the, recognition. The, and right that's there. the manager of the bank. That's recognition. Up. Right, exactly. So I was like, okay, so send me the information. <laughs> and then that, so with that and then other organizations, um, I get referrals from Vermont's Loss. And anyone that's trying to get bank loan ready yes, yes. And, and their financials is is the hic- hiccup, yeah. then banks and, and loan uh, entities in our community, they come to me, Crenshaw Chamber, uh, any of the, the CBO uh, community, community-based organizations, they reach out to me and ask, can I help? So small biz pros out there, you hear that? If you're looking to get bank loan ready and you don't know how to do it or what to do, what documents are needed, you need to reach out to Crystal Mitchell. Crystal, do you have a number or an email for them so they can know I, I exactly so how to get a hold of you? You can reach me at 323-447-7272 and you can go to uh, Mitchell Business Solution with no S at the end dot com. You can find me there. You can Google me and I will pop up somewhere on social media. That's right. I'm quite active oh, yeah. on social media. So. And I've gone to her website. It's a phenomenal web- website. She is just amazing. Everybody knows Crystal. Anyone who is anyone in the community from SoCal Edison, SoCal Gas, out there in the community, they know her. So you guys really need to check it out. Ruben Gonzalez, thank you for watching. <laughs> really appreciate you joining the Business Zone. So. Right now, what I want to ask my very special guest and co-host, Crystal Mitchell, Mm -hmm. is, so you've been doing finances and uh, financials and um, bookkeeping for a while. You're you're the certified QuickBooks trainer in this region, right? I am. I am in the community. I I have been using QuickBooks, and this is kind of going to tell my age. I have been using it since it actually launched the business in wow. 1988. Really? I have used every version. Yeah. And they change versions every year. Wow. I have used a, every version since 1988. I did not know QuickBooks yeah. existed that long. Yeah, that's when they first came out. They were the replacement of, remember a software called Mind Your Own Business? No. And Quicken? Oh, Quicken, I remember. Right. Well, yes. that was the Quicken. I used the, to use Quicken. Right. Quicken was really for individuals tracking their home yeah, businesses. Yeah, their personal the, finances. Their personal finances. Yeah. And people were going into business. They knew they were supposed to be tracking their money. Yeah. So then they would use Quicken, but Quicken wasn't supposed to be for businesses. Right. It was supposed to be for your investments, your paycheck, your thing like so that. So QuickBooks was a business portion right. of it. Right. So they were, people were trying to adapt it to their business. Yeah. And so, and the best thing about QuickBooks as a software product, and which is why I, I really, really um, uh, have used this product so long is they listen to us, yeah. the people that are using yes. it, the accountants and bookkeepers. Yes. So if we call in and ask questions and they're the next, at the next update, which is the next product, is the next year. Yes. They they update every year, right? And those changes are in that new software update. Mm, mm, mm. I love and that. And so, so they have their pulse on being the product that's user friendly yes. for small business owners, yes, and that's yes. very important. And they're very intuitive. Right. And now, as they've grown, they actually have decided to take over the marketplace. So they haven't. Their own CRM, your uh, community, your uh, customer retention. Yeah. Uh, and now they have your the link. They, you know, I was very resistant when they went online. Yeah. Because I didn't like the way the product, because the product wasn't designed for a bookkeeper. Right. Right. And nor was it by, uh, designed by the right. input of the accounting prof- professionals. Oh, I it see. It was created by a programmer. Mm-hmm. So it didn't adapt well. Mm. But now, again, they now, listen to us. They so listen. now they've adapted it. So, you know, I now know who to refer to an online platform and I now know who to refer to my desktop. But I have, I'm surprised myself. I have actually pretty much moved everybody over to an online platform. Unless Beautiful. they're a pretty large business and they have a lot of inventory to track and there's a lot of transactions going on, mm-hmm. then those are my um, my desktop people. But um, So are there, are there many certified QuickBooks trainer in this region? Well, there's, it's interesting. There's one or two, uh, I think uh, PCR has someone over there. 
uh, that does QuickBooks from what I heard, and I think I've heard a few people, but not too many. There's I'm a, only a handful, a right? Handful. Handful I'm of a you. Advisor with with QuickBooks, right? But probably far as in our community, not overall, right. but in our community, I'm pretty much the only one that's the trainer, right? So because <laughs> because of Crystal's expertise, and she's so good. She's a magician with numbers. <laughs> so I got a contract with Mount SAC uh, many years ago. And uh, Crystal was brought in on my team to help teach classes at Mount SAC because she is a certified QuickBooks trainer. And not too many of those are available in this area. Only a handful of certified QuickBooks trainer. So Quick, uh, Crystal was, was hired on the, under that contract and she was phenomenal. I'm going to tell you a little bit, and she'll tell you too. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Crystal did that, and I'm not bragging because, you know, she's my friend and I'm, and she's here, so I'm saying good things about her. <laughs> I'm saying it because I was truly amazed when she, when she got awarded that contract, she did something that other consultants didn't do. Not only did she teach the class and was successful at it in getting those individuals learning how to 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 do bookkeeping but after that she placed them in opportunities and jobs afterwards that was required <laughs> of the contract but crystal did it so i'm telling you this lady is a superwoman and on, on in the interest of women's history i'm telling you she gets my star so, because again, you know, it, it goes back to my philanthropy side, right? Yes. And, and so I'm not just in business to be in business. I'm in business to help businesses grow. That's right. And so I also know that um, you need a skill. Yes. I got into bookkeeping for one reason and one reason only. Yes. When I came out of college, I knew that my, uh, hey, Linda, I knew that my path was going to be entrepreneurship, but mm -hmm. I, I had a plan yes. to get there. So I was going to work through corporate America right. to glean all the information and all the resources and all the free training right. that they would provide. And so I went in that space, yes. but I did not. So I went in first in the admin piece, mm -hmm. but it's not very safe right. and secure no. in an admin no, piece. No, it's right? a disposable position. A, right. You <laughs> can be a secretary or an uh, administrative assistant, whatever the glorified yeah. name they want to do. Yes. When it's time to downsize, uh -huh, you're who, the first to who, go. Who's, who's gone? <laughs> you're Unless the you're the go. executive secretary to, to the, the president to the or president CEO. CEO. <laughs> right. But then there's a lot of kowtowing that goes yes. along and I'm not that humble. No. So um, <laughs> I went, okay, I need to be in a capacity where you are a valuable, valuable commodity, commodity. <laughs> and that you're just not going to kick me out because right. you lost money. Exactly. Because I'm already know how much money you have. That's right. So I went back to school <laughs> yeah. and, and, and completed and got training to be an accountant bookkeeper. And then they were the ones that sent me to school to, to work on QuickBooks. Amazing. And, at the, and then I started branching out on my own. I worked at an insurance company, and so I had my own clients and that kind of stuff. But I yeah. kept this piece. Yes. And so I kept growing that piece. And then I knew that was going to be the piece that I was going to use yes. when I exited right. corporate America. Yes. So I basically did it. So that I was the, one of the most valuable people on the property. Yes. And I made sure that I just wasn't a, uh, I'm a full charge bookkeeper when yes. I was working for a company. Didn't, and I did taxes back in the day in accounting, but I didn't want to do that. Right. I wanted to do, and I didn't want to run that kind of business yeah. because I'm really business development minded yeah. more than I am what to sit right, behind right. and just do numbers all yes. day. Yes. So I went, okay, so I need to do all aspects of it. And mm -hmm. I need to get good at all aspects of yeah, the business yeah. so that I will be valuable. So when the business closed, me, the CEO, the CFO, and the controller. We'll be the only we, one standing. We're going to be the only one standing. <laughs> and I'm there because I have to write the last check. That's right. I got to close out the book. Yeah. I got to get them ready for an audit. Uh -huh. And so when I leave out, we all leaving out together. That's right. And that's what happened. That's so right. I thought... Wow, what a, when you when I met you and that opportunity came along, yeah. I was like, what a great way to teach people how to have job security. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's what it is. And you, you did a phenomenal right. job. So and I loved it. It was and the young lady, so you know, we didn't tell them all the programs. So yeah. the program, one of the, the wonderful things that I liked about that program was that um 
we were taking individuals that were on social services yes. and we were getting them off of social services. And the plan was that they never, ever went back on. And so when I taught the class again, which is how I teach, I don't teach you just how to do it. Right. I teach you how to interpret it and how to grow. Exactly. And I even encourage them if they really, really like the numbers to go back to school to get their accounting degree. Uh, that would make it better. They, they came away with a QuickBook certificate so they could get jobs. And so we had a 95 percent uh, yeah, placement, 95 rate. placement rate. That's beautiful. Reten and retention rate. Now, how many people you know out there? And I want all of my small biz pros out there to tell me this. How many people you know out there in the marketplace who will train their own competitors, train their competitors to compete against them? That's what Crystal did. She, she trained these, these bookkeepers to be very special bookkeepers, to be able to do effective jobs. And she didn't really mind because she knew that she's got that, 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 um, uh, that industry and that occupation, you know, so because not, I have a specialty. In she's it. Got I'm a, specialty. a trouble. I'm a troubleshooter. She's I don't have to be worried shooter. about the competition because there's not too many people that do that. I go in. I, my real goal yeah. is get in and out. Get I ain't trying to be there a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and I teach you how to think and do like me. So what would happen is I would refer the people were and then the placement came because someone they knew what I was doing. Yeah. And they're like, you have any entry level people that you can refer to me? Yeah. Oh yeah, yes, I have quite I do. a few. As so. a matter of fact, you got fifteen of them. And he and they was they trained by you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we want them. Okay. And because they knew that that they had great uh training in the background because yes. they knew me. So so that was why that program was so successful yes. uh in the long run for everyone was because of the fact that I taught, and I taught them me. I yeah. made mini me's. Mini me's. Mini me's. And I'm <laughs> telling you, folks, the, the, the folks, the, uh, the official decision makers at Mount San Antonio College, they were just enamored by Crystal. They love her because uh, of her work ethic, um, you know, her reputation, her quality, and it's just amazing. So, and, yeah, and, and, Exactly. And, 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 I, and I really think I would have loved to have seen that, pro that program um, expanded into the LA area. This yeah. Mount Sac is out in in um, what is that Gabe, San Gabriel Valley area? Oh, that was uh, in the Walnut area. In Walnut, Walnut area. So yeah, so I would love to see that because you know we know we talk about the future of of entrepreneurship yeah. is making sure that whatever job you do is not repetitive. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's important. So. Um, Again, in the interest, uh, we're here, um, we're celebrating uh, Women's History Month on the Business Zone. And uh, Crystal, my co-host and I, we're here talking about her. We're giving you a little insight into Crystal Mitchell. She is phenomenal. So, Crystal, uh, we know that uh, only 4% of women-owned businesses receive bank loans. We know that only 7% of women-owned businesses receive investor investments when they're pushing their product or their business. Uh, why do you think that is, Crystal? Why do you think that is? Um, for one thing, I think it's because um, we still operate in a men's world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot of in business and, and we can really, really see it in different in, in, in now that we have the current uh, presidential administration, mm -hmm. that there is a lot of um, nepotism going on, yeah. right? And a lot of connections. So if I have connections with certain people, hey, thank you, Shirley. Yeah. If I have certain connections with certain people, I'm going to get certain preferential treatment, yes, right? Yes. Women generally are more geared into their business and nurturing their business and growing their Just business. Just like they would nurture their family. They're, they're, like they would nurture their family. They have incredible businesses. Yes. But when it's time to go out to do that networking yeah. thing, which is what men are very, very good at. They right. make a lot of deals. At, yeah, uh, good old boy network. Good, good old boy network. They make a lot of deals at the golf course yeah. and places like that. Right. They go to business meetings. And, yes. they, and they get invited to places right, that right. we don't get invited. Right. And I think when it comes to that, when you go to a banker, just like employment for women, yeah. Um, if they think you're a certain age and you're still at childbearing years, yeah. women get passed over. Right. I don't care how brilliant they right, are. Right. They figure at some point you're going to leave yeah. and then we're going to have a gap. So if you're you know, a young Caucasian 
a man with a family and a wife and a wife taking care of the kids, mm-hmm. they're going to move you up the ladder yeah. before. And that same thing happens when they go for loans. Right, right, right. So they, they don't take the women-owned businesses seriously. They don't take the women entrepreneurs seriously. They pass them over for opportunities because, one, they're thinking they won't be able to sustain themselves because they've got family. they got to attend to the families, mm-hmm. which is a total myth because... You know, when I was an employee growing up, I had a, a a manager. My manager was a female. And to me, I think she was a better leader than many of the other uh, persons that I've dealt with in the past. Yeah. She was brilliant. She knew how to coordinate the teams. She knew how to inspire the teams. Mm-hmm. She knew how to motivate the teams and get things done. And I think we think differently as well, to yes. be quite honest. Yes. I think we think we we see because we when, when we're you know we on the, on the flyer today it was about being a superwoman, right? Yes, yes. So we're managing homes. Yeah. We're, we're managing medi- work. Managing work. We're mediating uh, between our children, yeah. and our husbands, and, and school, employees at employees. work. So we have some skill sets. Yeah. That are cro- they cross over yeah. every part of yeah. our lives. Yeah. And even when we're at work, if we have young children, right. we're also maintaining in the backside of our brain. Right. So, you know, people say, and there's a thing, I think, in corporate America, they say you shouldn't multitask. Yeah. But the best multitaskers are women. Right, right. Because we have everything in a compile. Because you have to. Yeah. Because you got to be worried about whether your children are getting to school, the right. babysitter, they're being picked up. So certain times a day, you click yeah. to another channel. Yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, you can maintain the other channel at work and do a, a great job at what you do. And most of that, with that being said, most of that, after the woman has done all of that, they still only make 70%, 70 cents on the dollar. Yeah. 70 cents on the dollar. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. I don't know how, uh, you know, when, when uh, Kobe's uh, passed and uh, his accident, and his wife, Vanessa, was talking about their child yeah. and that here she was at 12 or 13 yeah. playing basketball. Yeah. But she already knew she wanted to play for the WNBA. Yeah. But she was already as a young protester or a young yeah. organizer yeah. working Advocate. to, advocating and advocating for equal play, yeah. p- pay for the WNBA. And that's how it's got to be. Because the WNBA, what is a, a basketball, a male basketball for the NBA? They're, they're making millions. So in- so a, a rookie a rookie uh, NBA male player, right, mm-hmm. um, when he enters the league, he's getting about a million. Mm-hmm. Second year, he's making about 2.9 mil. Mm-hmm. I don't think the women in the WNBA make any of that. You want to know how much first... they make? How much do they make? They start out at $40,000. $40,000? Oh, my God. That is unbelievable. Yeah. 40, unbelievable. 40000 40, That's what they start with. Unbelievable. You know, it is not even possible. You that, don't even, I mean, the 40, same. 40000 40000 Now, they can get injured. They're they, they going to do the same thing to men. Yes. Get. See, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what, and that's why, folks, you know, I want to say this. And that's why I'm on this campaign right now to really help and support a lot of uh, women-owned businesses because they get passed over a lot. They are not taken seriously. Over the last 15 years, 65% of new startup businesses are women-owned businesses. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't see that. A lot of people don't give credit to that. Only 4% of them are getting uh, government contracts. Only 4% of them are getting loans from banks. And 7% of them get invested into, they receive investments from investors. You know, that's pitiful. we got to change that. So part of what we're trying to do here on the business zone is to really help those. And that's why we, we have this system where we're trying to help you to build your back office. But once your back office is in place, You will be business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. And you can go after those contracts with confidence and you can win. Because no longer should you be making 70 cents on the dollar. (laughs) (laughs) No longer are you supposed to be getting only 4% of the contracts. The federal government has $500 billion in contract. Right. $500 billion and, every year. And so, you know, when I first met you, that I was quite amazed and quite interested in the numbers. In, and I didn't quite understand how 
in the minority contracting industry that we only represented maybe at that time, I think it was 13 percent. Yes. And I'm sitting there listening to you tell me this. And, and, and I and I do what I do. I went to go with my research yeah. and I researched like how many black owned or minority owned businesses in the state of California. Yeah. And and and, and it told me eight hundred thousand in the entire state. And then it gave me, you know, three to four hundred down here. And I'm going, there's only 13 percent of us. Exactly. And, and I think that was my question to yeah. you was why? Yes. Why, why yes. is that? And yes. then the person that was doing it was right. Sharon Evans, a, a, a business uh, resource resource center. center. Yeah. And so she basically said to me was. One, they feel that it's the application process or the process is too daunting. It's daunting. And uh, and they don't know how to navigate through it. And then once they they decide to do it and submit their application, it's like they get passed over. They're figuring, why am I wasting my time even doing this certification when I'm not even going to get contracts? Right, exactly. And so that was the other. And then the other area is my area. Yeah. Is the fact that they don't have their financials, financials, and then they don't have their financials. They they they're not filing their taxes properly yeah, right. uh, because the information is not valuable. Right. And I thought, okay, wait a minute, this is a space yeah. you know, problem to be solved yes, here. Yes. But even when we go beyond that, right, we mm -hmm. still talk about that. So you know, earlier this year, um, I did a workshop on uh, regarding women and yes. i think i shared with you and i'll, and I'll go find it right now yes. i shared with you it's a it's a um a report called the tapestry of black business yes okay and everybody every time i i show this to people they just are i, I was amazed yeah um because how women business owners are overlooked yeah uh when they have amazing business ideas. I yeah. mean, how many of the, because you really like working with oh, women. Oh, yeah, I love working with women-owned businesses. Because they their businesses are creative yes. and, yeah. and very scalable right. if they could find the resources. Yes. But I'm going to share this with our audience because um, I think it's important to keep repeating this, yes. is that in the United States, there are 2.5 million black owned businesses. Wow. Okay. And now remember, keep in mind, what is the number now for minority certified? Maybe about 15%, 15, 20? Uh, probably about 15% right now. Okay. So United States, yeah. 2.5. Hey, Pastor Robinson, 2.5 million, million minority. minority owned businesses. Wow. Okay. And you're saying 15% yeah. are, are contract ready. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and what are the opportunities? They could actually change their businesses how? Oh, yeah. There is a lot of opportunities there because especially with the county of Los Angeles, for example, they got 37 different departments. So each department has different needs. So many of these businesses, they can change their approach instead of doing the transactional approach. Right. It's to do contractual business. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So so now keep that in mind, everyone. So when I when I found this information uh, this is on the inside of a business so when you ask me why women don't get loans and, and why they're overlooked so when i looked at this they were saying 96 percent of the the non-employee represents nine employer mm -hmm. firms represent that 2.5 wow and then in that the 60 percent of that represents women-owned businesses wow so they're usually solo entities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? They, uh -huh. they, don't, they don't have employees. Right. And with that, though, this was the interesting part of this report was if they've been in business for less than uh, two years, and that's 43% of us yeah. as a woman, as yeah. a woman yeah. our annual revenue was $11,000. What? $11,651. No, that is pitiful. How can they live on that? They can't. That's not even a job. Wow. That is like, what do you call that? <laughs> When your, parents, when your parents give you uh, allowance, allowance. <laughs> that's what that is. So that's less than two years. Five years or more. Now, most businesses, if you make it past the two-year marker, yeah. you usually are moving upward yeah. into security yeah. and, and stability, right, right? Right, right? So again, their income, and this is 33% of the population, is 23000 or 24000 if I round it up. Wow. A year revenue. That is and your revenue. Unbelievable. 
two year, two to four years is underneath the the, the five years. So that's two to four is eighteen thousand. Now, is this minority women or is it all women? This is black owned. This oh, is okay, black okay. Women. Minority owned women. My minority women who, who own their black, own, own business. business, right? With oh. no employees. Oh my soul! And so then, uh, when we talk about the man side, his side is it represents thirty men represent thirty thirty nine percent of that two point five. Wow! So there are more women yeah. business owners oh, yeah. that are oh, black yeah. owned oh, yeah. than there are men. Yeah. And so those men represent again. They have no employees, mm -hmm. but their their two year marker is their they represent thirty three percent is twenty two thousand double that of the female. Yeah. Why? Yeah. They're doing they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That is crazy, man. And that then if you crazy. go into that five year, which represents about forty forty four or forty six percent, they're they're doing about forty eight thousand dollars. Still not enough to live on for no, you to be. Right. So then it changes and this is why we have to encourage and this is why women need to be able to get loans yes. so that they can hire right. and that's the only way you really can scale your exactly. business right and that part of that is what both of us do we yeah. coach you to help yes. you make sure your financials in place because yes. here it changes yes. so in that em employer owned firm employee owned, owned firms firm. with employees yeah. they represent small number 35% of the population yeah. but they, it changes drastically. Their first year in business, they are actually making uh, $161,000. What? The company's revenue. The company's annual revenue from the first two, for the two years as a non-employee, employee, no employees, right. you're making 11000 Wow. But if you have employees, you are actually in that same time frame. Yeah. But it's only 15 percent of the women that's doing that, yeah. though, is one hundred and sixty one, one hundred and sixty two thousand dollars in annual revenue. Wow. And then when we get to that five year plus, which represents about um, 64 percent, then that's about seven hundred and seventy six thousand dollars that in reference to. Being no employees, mm -hmm. you're only making twenty three thousand or twenty four thousand. So big that's, difference. That's the direction that they want to gear. That's towards. the direction. They but even the inequality yeah. is there because yeah. you take the same mm -hmm. men, and it yeah. could be actually the same type of business. Right. Men in that first year, they make four hundred double four hundred and forty one or forty two thousand. And that five year and plus, which represents about sixty nine percent right. of the men, sounds like three times the amount. They they're making one point six million dollars. Wow! In wow. that time frame, unbelievable. So they could be doing the exact same business. We need to balance the scale. We need to. So balance so the it's scale. very important. And so you know, we were just talking about the NBA and yeah. the WNBA, but this this is across the board across in the other board. businesses. Yes. So that tells me, and I would it would be interesting if we did a analysis. And let's say a real estate agent yeah. and male and female. Yeah. Who do we think is, and I'm going to do some research, who probably makes more money than, than the... Well, chances are it's a male. Yeah. Chances are it's a And male. is it not yeah. the same skill? Same thing. Same, same training? Thing. Yeah. Same exact thing. same thing. Same so thing. I don't know what that is. I don't know if we, people prefer to do business with men or mm -hmm. I don't quite know what that equality is or they just have a perception that women are not, the longevity is not there. I, I don't know well, what it is. Because you do a lot with a lot of women yeah, business. So what do you think? I think based on some studies that they've done, uh, they really, what they did, they they found that there is an innate bias against women. Mm. So if you have a man and a woman that goes to, go to the bank together, they go to the bank looking for a loan or a line of credit, mm -hmm. and the woman owns the business and the man is the manager in the business, guess who the loan officer is talking to? He's talking to the He's man. He's talking to the man and not the woman. That's like an innate thing. Like, yeah. so, so what are you guys doing the business and talking to the guy? She's the one who owns the business. Right. And that's been done so many times. They've done so many surveys on that. It's unbelievable. So there's an innate bias uh, against women, uh, period, in society. Right. But in business, it's even more rampant. I think so. So that's part of the reason why we here on the Business Zone, we're doing so much to help women own businesses. The first thing, folks, the first thing you got to do is to make sure your back office is in order. Yes. And that's what we do. Make sure your corporate documents are in order. 
you know, your li business license, your insurance, and all of those documents. You don't know how to do it. Talk to us. We'll walk you through the process. We'll provide you a checklist of those documents. Once those documents are in place, then what we're going to do, and one of the things that we teach in our workshop, right, mm -hmm. is when we do marketing, we talk about the five categories of buyers. Five, there are five categories. 3% are ready to purchase now. Mm -hmm. So 3% of your customers out there, they're ready to buy from you right now. Mm -hmm. You just don't know who they are. <laughs> then 7%, they're ready, but you know, you got to tweak them a little bit so they can come your way. 15%, you got to give them some incentive and say, hey, you know what? You know, I'll give you a 30 day trial period. Right. They, they will listen. 25%, they don't care about you. They will not talk to you, so don't even waste your time with them. And the 25% are usually the ones who are in bigger, more powerful positions, the ones who you can make a bigger contract with, but they won't talk to you. Right. They're the ones that you need to have your chambers, you need to have your trade associations as influencers speak on your behalf so you can get opportunities that way. Right. And then 50%, well, you don't exist to them. You're too small for them. So they, they, they don't even talk to you. So many of us, we try to go after the bigger businesses. And when you go after the bigger businesses, it's like they don't even see you. You don't exist. So I want you guys to think about it. So make sure you have your back office in order. Crystal and I, as a superwoman, she's <laughs> been there. She knows. She can help to get you in order. because. What I do is to help you with a back office, the certifications, uh, the contracts and all of that. Crystal helps you with the bookkeeping, the forensics, the money part of your business to make sure that's all right. And, and, and the reason that's important is because you have to speak the language. Yes. Right. Yes. You have to know when you go to talk to them, you know, we might think it might be kind of cute to, to change the language. But when you're talking to a banker or somebody like that, they want to know that you understand business language. Exactly. And that's the very first thing that exactly. I teach you, the, when I'm teaching classes. I need to teach you the accounting language, the yes. business language yes. of the industry. Yes. Because when you come to them with all of that, yeah. all of those entities in place, yes. you're going to force them to respect you. Yes. But what is happening, Gilbert, in today's society is women are now creating their own equity funds. And that's how it's and, supposed and, to be. And they are now being getting funded by yes. other women. Yes. So there's a lot of women just killing it mm -hmm. out right there. And I don't know if anybody had watched the commercial about the young black woman. She's in Target now. And it's, and you've been, it's been commercials. It's called the Honey Pot. Oh, okay. So she, create, she created a line of women products. Women, yeah. uh, um, uh, products. And so she got into... She got into Target. Yes. Um, because if you got those kind of products, if you're doing the distribution, you the pro you're designing and innovation of the mm -hmm. product, and then you you're you're you also have the distribution, yes. then now you can go and say, Hey, and and do your your due diligence yes. so find out how interested people are right. in this product. Yes. And so she got into the shelves. She first and, and when you go into a big box store, you kind of on a trial. Yes. So they ha might have you on the lower shelf. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually they, so she didn't move up to up. the top, yeah. but here's something that interesting took place. Yeah. So when she did a commercial, yeah. cause she's got money now, cause right. she went to one of these female right. e equity, fund equity fund management fund places management. Right. and got her funding. Yes. And so when she did do that, um, she put a, she did a commercial and the yeah. commercial was, you know, I'm so excited. I'm a black woman who was in Target on yeah. the shelves and Target is really good. Yeah. If you have a product and you've done everything that you need to do, yeah. patent, trademark yeah. and, 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 and made it scalable, yeah. they give people a chance give an at, at Target. Yeah. Target is really good about that. Yeah. Um, but she did. And then she says, and the reason she was doing this was so that young black girls can know that they too can create a product and get on the shelves yeah. of, 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 uh, target. Yeah. Backlash. Yeah. White America was like, why you got to make it a color? 
Oh Lord! And so, but but Black Twitter, yeah, jumped into play, yeah. and in 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 a short period of time, right. this woman got fifteen thousand likes, yeah, and her rating shot up in the air. But she was just telling her story. She's just telling her story. She's telling her story. She's telling her, and we all have that story. Yeah, every one of if us. If I'm has coming a story. from a poor neighborhood, whether the my nesson, my, yeah. my and ethnicity, whatever obstacles you have to face, right? I'm going to tell my story. Yeah. This is yeah. how I began. Right. Um, my father. Father may have been a plumber, and yeah. he had a small little business. And yes. I went to college, and I did, you know, menial jobs. Yes. And now I'm a billionaire. Yes, I yes. Got, that's my story. That's your story, and you can't take that no. story from no. me. So, so that was what she was doing, and yes. so the backlash. But so there was a backlash on the front end, but on the back end, yeah. they took care of it. Yeah. But but women are now going. You know what? We need to look at being investors yes. and invest. And this is what I'm yes. going to say to everyone. Once you've been in business and when we're looking for succession plans and we're looking at what's the next step, yeah. why don't you go out and look at some of these young, innovative businesses that yeah. are coming up that right. need funding. Right. And and there are a lot of uh, pitch uh, competitions. Yes. and Or just in, go and mentor one. Yeah. And if you see that their product has got some potential and some right. legs right. to it, Invest even right. a five thousand dollar investment yeah. to help them get to the next level. Yes. And if you you're in a position where you can do ten or twenty thousand, yeah. that will get them to that place that will send them over the right. place. That's worthwhile going back in and pulling someone up, especially if you've been successful right, yourself right. in your business. So what I want to do here, real quickly, folks, uh, small biz pros. Uh, uh, after talking with Crystal, my co-host, and uh, hearing um, what she has to say about women-owned businesses, I want to throw this out there. So we're going to do a two-dimensional thing. We're going to do it from the entrepreneur, and we're going to do it from the contract providers or the investor standpoint. So let's start from the entrepreneur. If you're a female entrepreneur, okay, what we're trying to do so you don't get pigeonholed and you don't get treated uh, unfairly, make sure your your organizational house is in, is in order. Yes. Make sure that you've got your back office taken care of. And if you don't know what back office is, back office means all the organizational documents that you need to run the business. Your business plan, your marketing plan, your, uh, your standard operating procedure, your, your fictitious business name, your insurance, all of those things. That's your, your back office, right? So you can run the business efficiently. Make sure that's in order. The financial piece, if you're not sure where you are with that, you can call on Crystal, my co-host <laughs> right here. Hey. Okay? She will help you guys, and she does forensics on the financials. She can help you guys amazingly. And even if she can uh, do the job for you because she's so busy with so many other opportunities, she can point you in a direction. She can give you an analysis and tell you what's going on, and then you can have your own bookkeeper. And I can it. teach them how to do it because I think you, yes. initially you do need to know your own books. And, yes. and here's a quick thing I'm going to share with you. Nonprofits are harder getting funding than even yes. uh, female nonprofit yeah. owner because we don't get the respect yeah, at all. You go true. into a room and there's men right. and y'all doing the same right. community-based organization. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he got the whole yeah. network right behind him. That is him. so true. And they're giving thousands and that thousands. Is so and, true. They, and they throw some pennies at yeah. us. So, and we're not just saying this. We're speaking from experience because we've seen it. Yeah. We've seen where Crystal's organization is in a room with many other male uh, uh, owner-operated nonprofits. And they rather fund those male nonprofits and crystals, females nonprofits. Right. So you got to do, you got to go through more hoops. You got to yes. jump through more hoops. But here's the thing. Um, your financials are even more important than a for-profit yes. financials. And, and I had a client recently that uh, when he did his 990, uh, what they had done was they had posted or when they were doing the chart of, when they were doing the chart of accounts, they, a, a really important line item, they have posted their, his travel, which is all business related. Yeah. They posted it to him personal. Oh. But it was all 
for the related to the the nonprofit. Right. So it it got kicked back from the IRS. Wow. And because it looked like he was funding his own travel. Oh, I see. And so we we flipped it and it was no problem. And he said, is that all it was? I said, yeah, that's all it was. It just was it needed to be um, adjusted and put in the right chart of account so that it would the travel. And we're talking significant because it travels across out of uh, international. Yeah, yeah. And so it was significant and it made a change in the expenses right. because it, when they when they did it to him it went over to a draw right. so it never hit the balance you never hit the sheet so, at all so that nonprofit would never have known that unless crystal stepped in and say hey you know let's examine this and see really what was going on with that? Exactly. Yes. So so it's important. So if you guys are interested and want me just to come in and make sure everything is right, I yeah. can train your staff. I can yeah. train you. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, next year, uh, in, in a couple of months, I'm going to uh, create a, I have an cr- online course that yeah. I'm going to be marketing. Yeah. And it's uh, the trainer, training the trainer. Yeah. And I'm going to teach those that are interested in becoming, doing what I do. Yes. Uh, how to become bookkeepers and how to set up their own business. And then my goal is mm-hmm. that I... I can, because I get re- job referrals, all, I mean, uh, uh, opportunities all the time. Yeah. And I want to refer those out to the people that I've trained. So so I want you guys, uh, Crystal, if you yeah, can give And them... I'm going to take a piece of the action, so you need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> if, Crystal, if you can give them your phone number again, just so they know how to get a hold of you, because I know a lot of you are listening and watching right now, you really need some help, because every small business needs financial help. Every small business. So, Crystal, tell him your number. So, my phone number is 323-447-7272, and you can reach me at cmitchell544 at gmail.com, and you can also Google me and my social media, Facebook, um, with the business zone, Crystal Mitchell, Mitchell Business Solutions, Recycling Black Dollars. However you want to reach me, you can go through any one of those entities, and I'm there for you. Just give me a call. Excellent. So there's one quick other part to this that I want to talk about. We talk about the entrepreneurial side. want to talk real quickly from the the contractor or the investor uh, part of it. If you haven't or you rarely award funds to a female-owned business, I'm challenging you, Mr. Investor or Miss Investor (laughs) or Miss Contract Provider, I'm, I'm challenging you to award contracts to at least three rim, women-owned entrepreneurs this year. At least three, okay? We're challenging you to that. And see how it is. Let's measure the performance. Let's see if it was worth your time to award these contracts. Because you will never know unless you do it. So let's try to step up the scale and increase the number and I, and of I women also, owned businesses. And add, to add to that, mentor a business is yes. just merging into the into the space, and yes. you see that help them yes. be able to get to that place yes. where they're contract ready or bank loan yes. ready. Uh, and if you know us, refer them over to us. I mean, you can even invest. Uh, that's an investment as well. Yes. Uh, purchase, uh, paying for a coach to yeah. help guide them, especially yes. if you see, and that way you're 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 investing in their business on a, on a basic level. Yes. So that you know we can do this, however it can be done. If you're in a position and you want to give back, help a small business owner. Beautiful. Uh, be able to move and be able to scale their business. So and it helps our whole entire community. Yes. And it's important for us to make sure that we're setting an example for our children. Yes. But economically, that's the only way we as minorities or black people are going to advance. We have to change the economic landscape. We got to change the eco landscape. So with that being said, we're at the end of our time today. And my very special guest in the studio today <laughs> was my co-host, Crystal Mitchell which she is doing phenomenal things in the community. And a lot of people know and some people didn't know. So we just wanted to to inform you guys today so you know who Crystal Mitchell is. There she is right there. Phenomenal. So you've been watching The Business Zone. We've been celebrating Women's History Month and in March. And we've got two more shows in this month. So next week, we is got it three? two? Three more shows. Yeah, I'm we're sorry. The first month. So we've got the 13th, we've got the 20th, and we've got the 27th. We're going to have some amazing women on this show. So you stay tuned 
and uh, you guys can share your insights as well. So, and if there's anybody that's watching on um, on YouTube or on Facebook Live, both mine's and yours, yes. in the business zone, and you want to be on the show, let us know. Yes, we can extend. And in April, I got a real big show. We're gonna uh, we're going to um, bring on legacy business owners, oh. people that have been in business for 60, 70, 80 years. I love years, that. I love and, that. And how you managed to stay in I business love that. For, for 70 I years. Love that. <laughs> and I create love that. it and create succession plans. I'm loving that. <laughs> That's so, gonna be April. So tune in guys next week where you're gonna be back on the business zone from three to four with Christo and Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. And give us a call here, 323 323- 293-3375, or if you need our personal number, my personal number is 888-882-1168. That's 888-882-1168. Crystal? All righty, so I'm 323-447-7272. Um, you can find me on social media. Just Google Crystal Mitchell, and I'll pop up, or The Business Zone, or Recycling Black Dollars. And you can also email me by reaching out, cmitchell544 at gmail.com. All right, so that's about it for today, folks, on Women's History and my very special guest, Crystal Mitchell. You've been watching The Business Zone with... Crystal. And Gilbert Buchanan, your small business firm and we're out all right as a small biz pro i saw we roll using procurement program and control as a small biz pro i saw we grow using procurement program and control i'm a business man yes i'm an entrepreneur